Still at football practice, Summer of the Mariposas, Chapter 18, The Heart. Without breath or warmth, a heart without love cannot beat. The Border Patrol called the police, the police called the FBI, and they all sat in front of us at a small table in a little off, nice little office at the International Bridge Customs Station. They asked us the same questions over and over again. The FBI, the FBI agent was the nicest one. He was tall and well-groomed, but most impressively, he was Mexican-American. His name was Special Agent Gonzalez, and the girls were in awe of him. They thought he was brighter than the moon. They were very nice to us. However, no matter how many times they asked us the same questions, we always stuck to the same story. We found a body, and we went to Mexico to deliver it. On the way back, our car broke down, so we had to abandon it. We walked to Abuelita's house. She drove us back, but when we realized we didn't have our papers with us, we swam back across. When they asked us how we made it across... The river, if grown men were known to drown in it, we said, as we were great swimmers. We'd been swimming back and forth across the river all our lives. Oh, yeah? Special Agent Gonzalez leaned in to speak to PETA directly. So what happened to your leg? A stray dog bit her, but she's all right now. Abuelita gave her some antibiotics and cleaned the wound for her, Juanita said, jumping in to save PETA from having to explain. Abuelita Remedios would probably forgive us for that one white lie, given that there was no other way to explain it. A chupacabra bit bite. When Special Agent Gonzalez continued to question us, we all followed Abuelita's advice and stuck to the more realistic part of the story. We hadn't been there very long before Officer Lopez, a young woman, came into the room and said, Gonzalez says, the mother's here. Mama, Peter said, almost jumping out of her chair. Juanita stood up and looked at the door behind the officers in the room. You mean our mother? Where is she, I asked. Can we see her? The twins asked, standing up to flank Juanita and Peter. Bring her in, Special Agent Gonzalez said, nodding toward the door. And so it was that on the twelfth day after our departure, we were finally reunited with Mama. I'll never forget that moment when the door of the office first opened and Mama stepped timidly into the room. One look in our direction and her eyes lit up like stars and pure, unrestrained joy glittered and shone in them. She was more than happy. She was ecstatic. As soon as she saw Mama, as soon as she saw us, Mama ran around the table to reach us. Her purse fell out of her hands and hit the floor with a muted clank as she put her arms around Peta. Tears rolled down her face as she hugged and kissed us one at a time, again and again, like she never wanted to stop. She was so overwhelmed with such relief, such joy, she could hardly talk. I love you, I love you, she kept saying as she kissed us repeatedly and held us tight. Please sit down, Special Agent Gond Gonzalez said, watching Mama surrounded by the love of five grateful daughters. Would you like something to drink? We have coffee. The girls had soft drinks while we waited. No, thank you. I'm fine, Mama said. We can. When can I take them home? They're drenched. I can't believe they swim all the way across the river. Special Agent Gonzalez smiled, a sincere smile that made his full lips curl up softly at the corners. I noticed that his eyes shone more when we made eye contact with Mama, like he was genuinely happy for her. We've asked the girls what happened so we can file our report. I'm sure Officer Lopez has already informed you of the details, but I can go over my report with you if you'd like. You'll get a copy of it before you leave here today, of course. But if you have any questions, any concerns, you can always call me. Mama turned around to look at Special Agent Gonzalez without letting go of PETA. I appreciate that. I am forever grateful to you. Well, we didn't do much, Officer Lopez said, standing behind our Special Agent Gonzalez's, Gonzalez across the table. The girls got themselves home. Oh, I almost forgot. They brought you a gift. Yes, we have roses for you, I said, turning to look at Mama. Officer Lopez was kind enough to put them in a vase so they would stay fresh for you. Mama took my hand and squeezed it, her eyes suddenly misty. Roses? For me? Wherever did you find the time to get me roses? They are a gift, I said, clinging to Mama's warm, loving grip. Officer P Lopez will get them for you. Special Agent Gonzalez said, and the young officer left the room in a hurry. Now there's one more thing. The girls were concerned about Child Protective Services getting involved. Mama's grip on my hand suddenly slackened, and I squeezed it tightly, letting her know silently that we were not going to let anything happen to our family, that we were going to be there for her. CPS? Mama's voice trailed off as she stood rigid, waiting for Special Agent Gonzalez to continue. Yes, Special Agent Gonzalez said. It is a procedure to report any incident involving children to them. Someone from their office will make contact with you soon. Now, I've, I've explained to the girls that they should tell the CPS investigator exactly what they have told me. Personally, I don't see a problem here. Not as far as you're concerned, 
but they have their own procedures to follow, and my report will indicate that I see no evidence of neglect on your part. If you should need my assistance in any way or have any questions that I might be able to answer, I am here to help you. As Mama processed this information, Officer Lopez walked back into the room carrying the vase. Here you go, she said. I took the vase from her and speculated on the luminous white roses. The Virgin said they would transform Mama, and I wondered how they would change man and would manifest itself. Would the presence of others affect Mama's transformation, or would it be instantaneous? Not knowing what to expect, I hesitated. These are for you, Velia said, taking the vase out of my hands and presenting them to Mama, who gave us a watery smile and took them with great appreciation. Thank you. They're beautiful, Mama said, putting her nose into the bouquet and smelling them. I love them almost as much as I love you. As the white rose, petal, rose petals caressed her face, I held my breath, waiting for that glorious moment, the moment when she would become more than ordinary, when she would be touched by the divine. However, the only thing that happened was that Mama put the vase down on the table and turned around to wrap her arms around us again. Well, we won't take any more of your time, Special Agent Gonzalez held out his hand for Mama to shake. Signora Gar Garza, we thank you very much for your patience. If it would be okay with you, I'd like to personally escort you home in our unmarked unit. It would make things easier, more private for you. Mama accepted Special Agent Gonzalez's proposal as we were all driven home in a couple of dark sedans. The vehicle pulled up to our driveway and we jumped out and stood on the sidewalk waiting for Mama to come in with us. I can't tell, tell you how much I appreciate everything you've done for us, Mama said her eyes misting over again as she stood just inside our fenced yard, shaking Special Agent Gonzalez's hand. We were glad to help, Officer Lopez said, extending her hand to Mama and then giving her a smile, a small, friendly hug. And remember, if you should need anything, we're a phone call away. No sooner had they left than the girls were all over Mama. They clustered around her on the front lawn, pouring so much sugar on her that she looked downright mystified. I walked up into the house and stood on the front porch holding Mama's roses, waiting for them to start walking up the driveway. I rubbed a translucent rose petal between my fingertips, wondering why they had failed to transform her. Looking sideways at, at Mama, I could see that nothing had changed about her. She looked as pretty as she ever was, but not in any a different way. Not enchanting, not bedazzling in her daughter's eyes, at least not in mine. Let's go inside, I said. I can't wait to sleep in my own bed tonight. Mama, Juanita stood in the driveway at the far right corner of the house, looking at something the rest of us couldn't see. Whose car is that? What car? Mama asked. Juanita pointed toward the back of the house, the blue Honda parked in the back. Mama walked over to look down the driveway. I stayed on the porch holding the roses with the twins and Pita around me, waiting. Ay, Dios mio, Mama said as she glanced around the neighborhood nervously, like she was expecting someone to step out of their house and attack us. Then she turned around, stepped onto the porch, and hurried up to the door. But she didn't open it. She just stood staring at it, blinking and looking confused, as if she didn't know how to open her own front door. It's all happening so fast. I didn't see it coming. And on the same day, all at once? What are you talking about? I asked. But Mama's eyes were glistening with unhashed tears, and her hands were trembling as she held the keys in a tight grip. Girls, I have to tell you something. Mama's voice suddenly cracked, and her forehead creased with worry lines. She took a deep breath and stammered on. Things have changed. Nothing's ever going to be the same again for you, for us. What do you mean? I asked. What's changed? Mama let out a short, heavy breath and she pressed her fingertips across the frown that puckered her brow together. Maybe we should just go inside, she whispered as if she were suddenly afraid the neighbors would hear us. Okay, Juanita said, raising her eyebrows and shaking her head to let me know she had no idea what was going on. As soon as I walked through the door, I set the vase down on the coffee table in the hallway to let to the left of the front door and turned around to hug Mama tightly. I had missed her so much she had been absent from our lives far longer than the 12 days we'd been gone, and I was thankful for the comfort of her love. I'm sorry, I whispered into her ear as she held me in her arms. Mama squeezed me tightly. It's okay. We can get through this. Whatever happens, I promise you everything's going to be all right. Being in her arms gave me the feeling that everything was going to be all right. But just when I was beginning to feel at ease, the most startling thing happened. We heard footsteps, cowboy boots, unmistakably loud and clear as they walked into the linoleum. Letting go of Mama, I turned around to the source of the footsteps to see the figure of the lone man standing at the threshold of the kitchen door. Papa? 
paused, then stepped into the hallway. We didn't react immediately. Instead, we stood there, all five of us, shocked at the sight of him after all this time. Papa? The word left my mouth in a thin breath that barely touched my lips because I couldn't believe he was really there. Yes, as he waited there at the end of the long hallway, all the way past four bedrooms and a bathroom door, something small and fragile twisted inside of me, my tattered heart shrinking away from him. We'd been so happy to see Mama, so overjoyed at her loving, genuine reception that we had, for a moment, forgotten we had a father. Being chased by witches and warlocks, battling monsters, even defeating demons, was nothing compared to the task of the facil facing the reality of our father's abandonment. Instinctively, Peta left our mother's side and wrapped herself around me as if I and I alone could protect her from the stranger Papa had become. I draped my arms around her small shoulders and filled my lungs with air, waiting for his explanation. But instead of explaining himself, my father did the same as he had always done when he'd come home from working out of town. As if his long, unexplained absence had been nothing more than another one of his trips, he took a small step forward and with a little fanfare, he opened his arms to us in wide, welcoming arc and said, Chiquitas, I am so glad to see you. Come, come, give your papa a hug. The minute she heard his words, Pita unfurled like a dandelion seed. Sa desprendido de mi. She pushed me off and flew it at him, almost knocking him backward as she went down onto one knee to receive her into his strong, protective arms. I have to admit, for a small, deranged second, my erratic heart jolted in my chest and I almost did the same thing. I almost ran into his arms. But then I remembered what Albelita had revealed to us and I knew Papa had not come home to be re reunited with us. He was probably here to finish what he'd started when he first abandoned us. Maybe he was picking up the rest of his stuff. He might even want to know why we'd taken his car, but I knew. I just knew he wasn't there for us. Papa, Papa, Peter squealed, calling out to him over and over again. Her voice filled the room with a heartbreaking desperation, not unlike the twittering of a nest full of orphan sparrows. Delia, Delia, Papa whispered, his eyes imploring them to go to him, even as he hugged Peter to himself. He, like she was his lifeline, please, it's been so long, come give your papa a hug. The twins looked sideways at each other, but didn't bulge. They turned to look at mama, her eyes blurring with unshed tears. But instead of saying anything, she pressed her lips together, swallowed hard, and looked away. Mama. <clears throat> mama, Juanita stepped forward and put her hand on her mother's shoulders. What is going on? Delia and Velia's words mingled together in the air. They touched Mama's arm, and our mother did what I feared she might do under our circumstances. She waved her hand toward Papa as if to say, Go, go, I give up. Don't do it, I muttered as I fought the urge to scream. He's faking it. Papa, please say you're not leaving. Delia and Delia's plea ripped through my heart, and I wrung my hands, wishing there were a way I could expose Papa for the wretch that I feared him to be before the girls got too attached to him again. Miss Cutitas, my precious twins. No, I won't leave again. I love you too much. At his loving words, the twins took a step toward him. I couldn't stop them, but I also couldn't keep my mouth shut. You've been gone for almost a year. Where was this love all that time? I asked, tasting the bitterness as the words left my insolent mouth. Odelia, Iha, Mia, love doesn't go away from one day to the next, not a father's love. It clings to our hearts and holds on so tight it keeps us awake at night. Please don't be so hard on your papa. Peter wrapped her arms tighter around papa's neck as she kissed his cheek. While Velia and Delia stood their ground with their arms crossed over their chest, the twins' eyes were blank. Cold, but not me. No, I was so enraged. I wanted to slap Papa hard across his face. I wanted to break him, make him beg for forgiveness for having left us without letting us know where he was or if he was even alive. But instead of hurling myself violently at him, I did the only thing I could do. I questioned, questioned his devotion. Is that true? Or is it just a line from one of your songs? My spiteful words delivered their poison, and my father flinched. He blinked nervously, and for a moment, he was at a loss for words. Peter let go of Papa's neck and turned to look at me. Her eyes were full of fear and something else, doubt, I think. It's not a line. I don't even sing anymore. I left the band. I'm home for good, Papa finally answered, tightening his hold on Peter as if to mark his words. Odelia, I am your Papa. I could never stop loving you, ever. 
Your faces are embedded in my heart. Our faces? Really? I moved slowly, deliberately toward Papa as I continued. Accusations roiled inside of me, swirling in my head like furling tornado clouds until I thought I might explode if I didn't let them out. What about our feelings, Papa? Did you ever think about what your disappearance would do to us? It seems to me like you think being gone for almost a year without even a phone call to let us know you're alive is perfectly all right, but it's not. It's not all right at all. Mama, standing behind me, was crying openly now. Her face was covered in tears and her body shook as she hugged herself. Trust me, Munekas, Papa continued. Delia, Vilia, Juanita, I have never stopped loving any of you. Not even for a second. His words were meant to charm and the twins were wavering. Their lips were quivering. They were getting closer to each other in that connected way of theirs as if trying to make up their minds and suddenly they broke the bond and rushed to hug papa who let go of pita to hug them the twins huddled around them towering over them they'd grown so much in the time he'd been gone yet they were still little girls clinging to their childhood and their need for his love i wondered if i'd ever been in that i wondered if i've ever been that innocent i felt numb inside come on juanita begged me inching herself toward the familia before us she grabbed my hand but i shook my head something inside me was wounded the pain speared my heart and the threat of tears blinded me so i tightened my grip on juanita's hand fighting the urge to scream to cry to run away from it all then just as reluctantly as the last leaf of autumn falls off a desiccated branch juanita's hand slackened and fell away from mine she walked away from me leaving me alone with my anger and resentment papa's arrival had done what had done what Cecilia and her evil trinity could not accomplish. His empty promises broke the code of the Cinco Hermanitas. We were five little sisters together no more. Cinco Hermanitos torn completely apart. Just promise you'll never leave us again, Juanita requested and hugged Papa. His eyes misted with love as he broke free of the others and took her into his arms as if she was the most beloved of his daughters. You are my family, he whispered kissing the crown of Juanita's head. I would never tear us apart. We were a family once and we'll be a family again if it kills me. I will never again leave your side.